Welcome to Scramble Game Show. Today, we have a guest. Uh, this guest is uh, a resident of the town of Somers and a friend of mine. Uh, he's a photographer. In fact, in his career, he has uh, done a lot of uh, uh, photographs for magazines, uh, especially for Newsweek. He's the cover cover photo, uh, photograph, sort of photog photographer. That is uh, very special, as you know, uh, these magazines, uh, their cover design is a, a big deal. Now, we actually have this guest before and have shown some of his uh, uh, work on these uh, uh, covers for magazines. And one of the, uh, in fact, uh, I still remember uh, a famous picture showing a uh, uh, tape recorder that uh, the tape was cut and uh, that photograph sort of referring to a uh, episode of the President uh, Nixon's uh, Watergate. <laughs> so uh, those are uh, uh, classic sort of pictures and uh, sometimes when one picture tells uh, a million words of story, once you see a picture uh, you sort of remind you the whole story. Now today uh, our guest uh, will show us another treat. Uh, this is uh, uh, very interesting, particularly to uh, young people no nowadays. Uh, it's um, his own uh, venture uh, trips to different places. And he's a uh, world traveler in taking lots of trips. And today we'll uh, specially focus on one. And I'm not going to uh, tell you now and until uh, I introduce my guest. Now, my guest is Mr. Ron Meyerson. Let's welcome him. Ron. Thank you so much, Ife. It's <laughs> Thank a you. pleasure to be here. Yeah. And I feel honored because this is my third time here. Oh, yes, yeah. And yeah. very much so. And having yeah. been here three times, I was a little disappointed. I did not have my own dressing room. <laughs> but nonetheless, <laughs> we, we, it, it we, is we, a pleasure to be here. We, we were always uh, trying to uh, increase our budget uh, from uh, $80 a year. <laughs> compared to Letterman, <laughs> who's uh, $80 million a year. Thank you. <laughs> so the dressing room has to wait a little. <laughs> I don't mind waiting. I'm here today to discuss nature through the lens of a camera. The dictionary, the Webster's Dictionary particularly, has a very, very long definition of the word nature. <clears throat> I sum it up by saying nature is everything that isn't man-made. Mm -hmm. And i like to focus today, because of the time factor, on just part of one trip, the wild animals of the Serengeti. Mm -hmm. And most of my time is spent photographing nature and its bountiful riches. Um, so the, this trip is uh, uh, to Africa. Yes. Right? And of course, Africa always reminds people uh, lots of animals. Yes. Right. So you you probably in your nature show you will cover a uh, lots of you know animals uh, uh, in Africa. Yes. Actually, we spent ten days in the Serengeti, mm -hmm. and the Serengeti is inhabited by fifty-seven different animals, different species. Mm -hmm. And I was fortunate enough to photograph fifty-two. Wow, fifty-two out of fifty-seven. That's ah. right. We had an extraordinary naturalist. We lived in a tent yeah. for ten days without. Mm -hmm. Hot water, electricity, yeah. lots of bugs, etc. <laughs> lots of bugs, that's, and that's we a were problem. Afforded for my wife and I, yeah. one bucket of water a day to shower, mm. to wash, etc. Oh, wow. But it was an extraordinary experience. Yeah. Well, how are you going to go about, say, showing us this? You want to sort of start out with a little bit of map to show what, where you are, yes, and I, then I, go I into it? I will start out mm -hmm. with just the map of Africa, mm -hmm. and then we'll dwell on a little bit about the Serengeti, mm -hmm. and then we'll proceed to show some of the 52. Okay, all animals. right, let's, let's have our Africa map first on the screen for the audience so we can uh, uh, sort of uh, talk about this map first. Uh, all right, uh, this I think on the TV screen, uh, audience can see that pretty well. Yeah, yeah. you can see Ta Tanzania mm -hmm. is listed on there. Mm -hmm. And the Serengeti is in the northeast part of Tanzania. Mm -hmm. uh, 
It's actually 12,000 square miles, the Serengeti, mm -hmm. not Tanzania. Mm -hmm. 12,000 square miles that's inhabited by all these animals. It's a huge grassland, mm -hmm. and the size of it mm -hmm. is the size of Connecticut. Right, yeah, it that's, is huge. It's a state, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Serengeti means endless plain. Endless plain. Mm -hmm. endless Serengeti plain. is a Maasai wor mm -hmm. word, and the Serengeti is inhabited by the Maasai tribe. Mm -hmm. Maasai males sometimes go to perhaps seven feet tall. Mm. Uh, the Serengeti also has the largest migration of mammals in the world. Mm -hmm. They migrate to Kenya mm -hmm. because of the drought in the Serengeti, mm -hmm. and it's a distance of 650 miles. And the animals travel. Animals travel that far. There is mm -hmm. 750,000 zebra, mm -hmm. a million and a half wildebeest, mm -hmm. and many other animals totaling mm -hmm. to about three million animals. And we were there mm -hmm. for the migration. Wow. It that was so cool. hard to capture in camera because it's a sea of animals. Mm -hmm. And during this period, or prior to it, the wildebeest mm -hmm. will actually give birth to 600 calves. And you will see a picture ah. when the calves are born during mm -hmm. the migration. Mm -hmm. They just get up just and go, travel along. Keep on going. Ah. Yeah. Oh, so the baby really is very mature. Uh, no, when indeed. It gives, uh, yeah. And as I said, the trip is like traveling from here to North Carolina. Mm. Of course, they pay no tolls. On foot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's quite an experience to see. Mm -hmm. um, it's also renowned for the world's largest lion population. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to begin next with the picture of the wildebeest. Oh, that's next. The, the first one is wildebeest? Oh, yeah. okay. Now, that's this the is the traveling. migration. Mm -hmm. And the wildebeest will start from Tanzania, mm -hmm. travel on to Kenya, and a lot of predators mm -hmm. line up around the wildebeest and other animals, so not all of them will make it there. So who are the uh, predators uh, for, for the wildebeest? Oh, no. Of course, lions probably. One. Lions, yeah. jackals. Mm -hmm. um, lions are the most dangerous mm -hmm. enemy. And uh, you will get a picture of a birthing. Next, please. Okay. Next picture. Next. Yeah. Yeah, these. Um, <laughs> all right, you, you can first talking. Uh, we'll okay, see. what you're going to see is a calf who has just been born. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, this is the calf just been born? This calf was born, I would assume, about an hour two hours before and he's up and he is going with mommy yeah on well this, this is interesting this is a raise a question i mean human beings are most intelligent uh, animal <laughs> oh, yes. and the baby takes about 10 months before it even can walk right that's right my, and well this it depends is a, on the baby my children were a little later <laughs> right so this, this is, you say, in a couple of hours can walk, so yes. they must be uh, pretty yes. intelligent. And mind you, five to 600,000 mm -hmm. are born prior to the migration, mm -hmm. and some are born during the migration. Uh-huh. That's very amazing, amazing. Yeah. Yes. Next. Okay, next picture. This is interesting. You know, uh, we have to do this slowly. Next one is the zebras, huh? Zebras. Mm. Now... These zebras are not romancing each other. Mm -hmm. They're clever enough to stand in this position yeah. because they can look in two directions. Oh, guarding protect, each other. Guarding each other mm -hmm. from predators. Mm -hmm. And as I said, 750,000 zebras travel along. There's one uniquity mm -hmm. also, two of them actually, to the zebra. Number one is, like our fingerprints, mm -hmm. there's th no two zebras have the same stripes. The pattern. Same 
Oh, pattern. Oh, that's interesting. I never, yeah, I yeah. haven't heard that. And that's also, very interesting. Yeah. They basically are similar to our horses, mm -hmm. but nobody has ever been able to tame a zebra. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, so zebra is not tameable. Maybe that's the reason we never see any racing horses with zebra. Yeah, zebras would <laughs> far outrun them. And uh, we got, the nice thing about our trip, we had a wonderful naturalist. Yeah. And in some cases, he took us within a few feet of lions, uh, all these creatures, and even the zebras, although there aren't that many humans in mm -hmm. the Serengeti, mm -hmm. they had no fear of us, mm -hmm. but they, have, they know what their predators are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next, All right. the zebras. Now, this is the, I'm sorry, the hippopotamus. Yeah. The hippopotamus uh, are not part of the migration. Mm. However, this is a picture of two males fighting over a female. Oh, uh, they are fighting. This is not kissing. <laughs> no, no, that's they're battling. This is in a very narrow pond. No, I don't think so. And they're the third largest mammal, yeah. second to the rhinoceros and yeah. elephant. And they are the heaviest. Mm -hmm. They actually go back to 16 million years ago. Uh -huh. 60 million 16 years ago. 16 million yeah. years ago. A lot of the animals I'm showing you mm -hmm. date back historically mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to millions of years, mm -hmm. the first evidence of the hippopotamus. Mm. And they've been clocked to run at 19 miles an hour. Really? And they're the most aggressive animal uh -huh. in the Serengeti. They're very dangerous. Uh -huh. Do they attack uh, sort of uh, uh, other animals? Or yes, they do. Uh -huh. uh, they are dangerous to humans and other animals. Mm -hmm. uh, next, we'll have the elephants, All please. Right. Ah, now, that's, I've mm -hmm. had very few dangerous experiences during my nature photography, mm -hmm. but this was a serious situation. Mm -hmm. We were in an oversized vehicle made by maybe Toyota, mm -hmm. with an open top. Mm -hmm. And I was standing upright, mm -hmm. taking pictures, mm -hmm. seeing the herd of elephants. Mm -hmm. And it's so much easier to take nature pictures today because the lenses are longer, right. and because digital is faster than right, film. Right, right, you can capture We fast were distance from the elephants, mm -hmm. but something stirred them, and they came charging at us. At the car. And in our direction, mm -hmm. and only a few were shown mm -hmm. in this picture, but they avoided us. Huh. They just round around us, and I thought we we're going to be stopped. <laughs> My wife was <laughs> your life was uh, danger. <laughs> However, yeah. we survived. So they did. They just bypassed you. They just bypassed us, uh -huh. and. Um, I, I guess they have no fear of you. Not probably. at all. They just want to uh, show that you know they yeah. are really and the you have master to there. Some of these elephants are fifteen thousand pounds, and wow. they're most notably Seven known tons. by yeah. their trunks. Mm -hmm. And their trunks have many uses. Mm -hmm. They're used as a tool. Yep. They're used for so many different reasons. But one of the things most people don't know. They breathe through their nose. Mm -hmm. There are many animals that do not breathe through their mouth. Mm -hmm. So the trunk is very vital. Mm -hmm. And of course, their incisor or teeth grow into their huge trusk, mm -hmm. tusks. Mm -hmm. And they're susceptible to, to poachers mm -hmm. who want to... Oh yeah, that's, that's one of the issues that uh, uh, the animal uh, protection, you know, we're trying to protect the elephants being uh, sort of a slaughtered by uh, all these uh, tusk hunters, right? Yes, because the ivory is so valuable. Mm -hmm. Next, please. Okay, this is a... Gazelle? Gazelles. Oh, gazelles. Uh -huh. What kind Gaz of family is, is in the family of a uh, goat? Uh, no, they're in the deer family, deer. actually. Deer. Elks, gazelles. Oh, I see. Uh, Topaki. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I think I have a picture of, et cetera. But they are the fastest creatures on yes. land. They got the very skinny but long legs. They can really jump. And they can run. Run and jump, yeah. 30 miles an hour, and they can leap 
over yep. the highest obstacles, mm -hmm. and yet they are the tamest, sweetest animals. Oh. Um, yeah. We approached one of their babies, mm -hmm. and the male is in the distance, mm -hmm. the female is there, mm -hmm. but they did not object us, mm -hmm. to us approaching them by foot. So the tainable, we don't see much uh, as a pet in this, uh, in our country. No, we don't. And they live mostly in the grasslands yeah. and in deserts. Uh, they can't inhabit yeah. any other environment. Why desert? The desert, I assume, for them, mm -hmm. they're like Africa, mm -hmm. all parts of Africa, they love the warm weather. Mm -hmm and they thrive in the desert also. And they, of course, they are vegetarian, right? They, yes, they eat yes, the grass. Yes. Um, Next, yeah. please. All right. Oh. The giraffe, giraffe. all yeah. interested in it because every zoo has a collection of giraffes. Right. And uh, they're basically an African animal. Now, uh, in giraffe, if they give baby, is the baby also immediately can walk? That I don't know. I we, think, I think uh, all these. I would think huh? many of these beasts uh -huh. uh, have animals, um, offsprings that walk yeah. shortly I mean, after birth. This is, uh, when I say intelligence, perhaps not the, the right word, uh, they're certainly, uh, uh, their brains are very good in doing uh, balancing of their, uh, you know, weight. Yes. Right? I mean, they are four legs. Uh, they are better than two legs, of course, in balancing. Yes. But they're pretty big. Yes. As they're born. I mean, uh, I think. And although their brains aren't equal to ours, they've got an innate sense of danger. Mm -hmm. Be it smell, in some cases, hearing. Yeah, their senses are far more you know, senses. Their senses are far more acute mm -hmm. than ours. Mm -hmm. And that's how they sustain life. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, and of course, giraffes are well known. Uh -huh. And uh, food is more accessible to them because being vegetarians, they can eat off trees. And they're tall. <laughs> yes, and other animals can't get to it. Right, right. So in a sense, many animals in the Serengeti battle each other mm -hmm. for vegetation, etc. The giraffe does not have this problem. Yeah. <laughs> and next we have the king. Oh, yes. The king. King of the land. <laughs> of the land, the lion. Yeah. Uh, lions are also very large. They go as much as 550 to 600 pounds, mm -hmm. and they can live as long as 20 years. Mm -hmm. The male lion, unfortunately, in the Serengeti, will only last about 10 years, because they're constantly battling other males. Mm -hmm. They have a huge pride, a group of females, mm -hmm. to one male. I see. And other males will attack, mm -hmm. so maybe 10 to 14 years. Oh, so their social structure is such that uh, uh, a male lion would have a, a group of a female sort yes, of as a family yes, yes. and they have to protect uh, yeah. from the others attacking. Yeah, there are a few interesting things about the animals of the Serengeti. Mm -hmm. The male elephant has a problem too mm -hmm. because when he's no longer capable of fathering, he is sent off oh. to a different area to live. A sort of a they no retirement. <laughs> that's right. They're no longer part of the herd. I see. I see. Fortunately, well, that, that does not happen to the human. Well, that's remind me is a story. Isn't that they have the so-called elephant barrier ground that exactly. elephant goes there, and yes. those are these old elephants yeah. being sent there, and they died. A very so good therefore, point. Yes. A, a group of uh, you know all their uh, uh, remains are there. Yes. And. They will eventually die in this area, and you're so right. Mm -hmm. That is their burial ground, mm -hmm. indeed. Next, please. Oh, this rhino. <laughs> ah, the rhino. Yeah. I've got to tell you a story about a rhino, a scary experience yeah. in a different venue. Yeah. We went trekking in Nepal. In uh, Nepal, uh-huh. And we also, part of that trip, we went off on a elephant mm -hmm. into the jungle. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, this is a great place to take pictures. And the rhino sat way off in a distance. Mm -hmm. But when he sensed us. You didn't see that, right? Oh, I saw him. And he started to charge yeah. towards the elephant. 
when he approached the elephant, he had a sense how large it was, <laughs> and he just it backed stopped. away. <laughs> Once again, as with the elephants, I was quite fearful. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, anyway. so that elephant, at least, I mean, is not known to be very hostile to humans. Oh, not at all, right? not at all. So that's, uh, yeah. The rhino will reach 2,000 pounds a ton, mm -hmm. and they have relatively very small brains mm -hmm. and large horns. They also are very aggressive creatures, and they too are very fearful of poachers mm -hmm. because their horns are ivory. Yes. And they also. That, that's not ivory. I think the rhino horn is known as, uh, uh, <laughs> um, what do they call this? Um, uh, it's, a, it's a stimulant. You're right. It's a, I'm for, sorry. For You're male still right. stim, stimulant, well, right? That's right. Yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. But it's still very valuable. <laughs> that's <laughs> <There's some technical laughs> maybe changes. more valuable than that, <laughs> the ivory. <laughs> Present company. And they sell by, by uh, uh, you know, sort of a not even ounce, means you know, yeah. fraction of ounce. <laughs> now, next, please. The jackal. Uh -huh. Now, we always have the sense of jackals being evil. Yeah. And they Very, are uh, evil in some respects because mm -hmm. they're known as proficient scavengers. Yeah. You'll see them all over the Serengeti scavenging mm -hmm. animals. Mm -hmm. Their long lo legs and curved teeth are adapted for hunting also. Mm -hmm. And they too can run at a Fast. rapid speed yep. of almost 10 miles an hour. Do they attack in the daytime or yes, nighttime? Yes, yes. Daytime, yes. right? Hmm. Uh, they're Different not from, nocturnal. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and there, uh, look at the picture. Uh, the tail is very thick. It is. So the tail has a, any use or power? or? I think when they're running, mm -hmm. it gives them a great sense of balance. Mm. Um, next, please. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, and, and this uh, jack is also known to be sort of either clever or shrewd, yes. right? Yeah, this, yeah. yeah. Next, okay, let's talk. What's next to you? Okay, the yeah? eagle. Yeah? Oh, the eagle. And uh, how many species of eagle in, in Africa? It must be many different. Oh, I would imagine. Um, yeah, this particular picture is not the American eagle. No, I was going to say, we always associate... Patriotically, of course. <laughs> Eagle is America. <laughs> Eagle is an American creature, but quite the contrary. Uh -huh. There are dozens and dozens of different kinds of species that live in Africa and thrive in Africa. Mm -hmm. And they, too, live off small birds as prey, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. They're very powerful built birds. They have heavy head and a heavy beak, mm -hmm. and they're very muscular. And that they have three to four times the vision of a human being. Right. They, they can, can see their prey from a long distance off. Yeah, in fact, um, eagles seem to be tameable. Right? tameable. Yes. Because uh, I know their trainers, they can train their eagle, fly off and come back and so on. Yeah. And because they have that sharp eye, the, the training actually try to get them to fetch things. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, it, it, in fact, they can train them to be an uh, attacker uh, let's say uh, to attack you because the watch you wear or the ring on your oh, yes. finger, and they will just you know go for it. Yes, I mean that becomes make them like a weapon. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before I go on, I'd like to mention since we're talking about birds, and I'm mm -hmm. following this up with falcons, mm -hmm. that if you have an interest in wild birds or birds, there's a place in Brewster, New York, mm -hmm. called Green Chimneys. Yes, Green Chimney. Yeah, and I know. They have uh, a Birds uh, of Prey Day every June. It's mm. worth the trip there because oh, yes. all yeah, the, the uh, uh, a mutual Maybe our mutual friend is Alma Moore. Yeah. As I mentioned that uh, numerous times, I, d I never made it. I would. It's worth it because you'll see all of these birds with their trainers. Right. And you can just walk right up to them. You learn about the yeah, habitat. Yeah, is, is it annually once? The early, the first week in June. Yeah, I, he was telling me, unfortunately... I, I uh, my sciatic pain yeah. has sort of <laughs> disabled well, me. We'll go together next year. Yeah, that would be interesting. There are also two places, if I might digress, mm -hmm. in our immediate area 
if you have a love of nature. Um, in South Salem, mm -hmm. there is a wolf preserve. Oh. And if you go to wolfny.org mm -hmm. in South Salem, you can get the information. But they have packs of wolves, mm -hmm. they have a lecture, etc. Mm -hmm. And I also digress and say one of my favorite places to go is the Rainbows and Butterfly Farm in Pauling, New York. Oh, so close. Yes, and you can actually go into buildings mm -hmm. and they'll put a liquid on your finger and butterflies will rest on your finger. They give lectures <laughs> and you can learn all about butterflies. It's a fascinating place to take children. Uh, isn't it, f uh, the, the butterfly has also the uh, sort of seasonal, uh, uh, you know, births is before spring when they all, you know, came out or some, some. Yes, what they do, like a Hatching, little... hatching out. And, uh, I'll talk about butterflies just a little later. Okay, all right, all right, I'll say butterflies that. Butterflies are also migrating creatures. Yeah. Um, next, please. All right. Oh, this is the uh, lizard. Okay. Uh, this is one of the many lizards mm -hmm. that run wild all over the Serengeti. And the one, this one has a, the head is a sort of orange color? Yes, huh? yes. It's very weird looking. <laughs> Next, please. All right, he needs time. Let's see. Well, uh, this, uh, this lizard, how big it is size-wise? It's about two-thirds the size of an iguana. They're probably... About a foot? About a foot. Huh. I yes. Um, yeah. So, it's, although I must say, yeah. in parts of Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. I photographed iguanas mm -hmm. that are oh two, two and a half feet. Mm -hmm. They're immense. Right. They actually have giant iguanas. Mm -hmm. This is another member of the elk yep. family, the deer Co family. This is a topaki, topaki. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't roam about in herds. Mm -hmm. It roams individually mm -hmm. and will leave its female and its offspring. Mm -hmm. Next, please. And they seem to be a pretty uh, tame animal too, right? Huh? Yes. Next. I'm sorry. You say that roam alone by, by himself. Uh, they, they don't go back to their... Uh, they will. Uh -huh. They will go back to their... Offspring. Offsprings, uh, etc. Uh -huh. Now, this is a Maasai warrior mm -hmm. who befriended us. Mm -hmm. And Maasai males can go, go to perhaps seven feet. Yeah, tall person. Yeah. And they're very, very primitive. Mm -hmm. uh, next, please. The Maasai warrior yeah. himself actually does hunt with his spear. Mm -hmm. It isn't just a photo opportunity. Yeah. It isn't a commercial experience. And we had the thrill of going to their village, mm -hmm. see how they live, going into their classrooms, mm -hmm. and see how they farm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very surprising mm -hmm. that how they can thrive and how they welcome uh, are outsiders. Are they a big population or a small? No, it's a small, small population. population. Yeah. And they don't market themselves. This is a Maasai child. Uh -huh. And uh, we yeah. approached a teenager, yeah. and she did not know how old she was. Huh. She had tattoos on her oh, face. So as the primitive, really primitive in a yes. sense. Uh, they don't, I mean, so their language is also pretty uh, primitive? She spoke English, barely, mm -hmm. and then an older woman mm -hmm. translated for her. Mm -hmm. She had to walk a mile and a half to school and a mile and a half back. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the fact that she doesn't know uh, how old she is, yeah. that means their, their counting system or their yes. calendar, calendar yeah. all that is Now, is she wasn't not, going, uh, I will show you shortly, mm -hmm. one of their educational facilities, mm -hmm. and their educational f facilities do deal with the a lot of subjects that our children do, mm -hmm. mathematics, spelling, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. uh, and the children are very friendly, very outgoing. Mm -hmm. uh, and the residents, we were surprised their village is not commercial. They don't sell souvenirs mm -hmm. and uh, they don't try to capitalize on their lifestyle. Well, is that part of because their education is uh, sort of a... N n I think so. Uh -huh. I think it's um, 
Just Probably. living a very primitive life, yeah. It is really. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the things they did, I wouldn't even discuss on television with their animals, etc. Mm -hmm. They're not modern ways mm -hmm. uh, of dealing with their ma food, mm -hmm. animals for food, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, and that's the village. Yeah, that's the village. And what they're doing there, mm -hmm. their huts are so primitive. They're repairing a woman. Women in the, to the left are repairing a hut with mud, mm -hmm. and the row women are singing spiritual songs to... So like a cheerleaders? <laughs> cheerleaders, is exactly the word I was going to be, use. And they went then, I don't think I have a picture of this, they went off to do yeah. their so, dances for uh, us. The, the workers also women. Women. S singing is also women. Yeah. And where are the men? The men, they have limited farming for the men, yeah. but the men uh, just linger to themselves. The men don't do too much work. I see. <laughs> Even, I have pictures I'm not showing. If you go to the full hut, when mm -hmm. they, they have to rethatch, mm -hmm. women go on top, they do that, etc. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, I'd say probably 78% of the work. Well, is that, you can say that the, the uh, social system is a female dominating or just the men no, being I think the lazy? No, I think the chauvinistic <laughs> system. Chauvinistic, <laughs> lazy. <laughs> yes, but I shouldn't mock it because they're very happy people. Uh, they invited us to go into their homes yeah. and as limited as their facilities are, et cetera, they have a very happy home life with mm. their children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually, when when a, a primitive society generally are happier, yes. I mean, less sort of desire, less uh, you know uh, provisions somehow makes.